Hi, welcome to the fifth part of understanding EEG. In this episode, we will learn the definition of EEG. We will have an introduction and orientation to the EEG science. So let us start the show. Before that, we are going to have a brief idea about the different sciences used in the field what are the difference between them and what is the definition of each one of them. We will start with the neuroscience, which is the scientific study of the nervous system. The scope of the neuroscience has broadened to include different approaches used to study the molecular, developmental, structural, functional, evolutionary, and medical aspects of the nervous system. The techniques used by the neuroscientists have also expanded from biophysical and molecular studies of individual nerve cells or neurons to imaging of perceptual and motor tasks in the brain. Recent theoretical advances in neuroscience have also been aided by the study of the neural networks. In other words, we can say that neuroscience can be defined as a scientific study of the brain and the nervous system. On the other hand, we will have the definition of of neurophysiology. Neurophysiology can be defined as the study of the nervous system functions. Primarily, it's connected with neurobiology, psychology, neurology, clinical neurophysiology, electrophysiology, biophysical neurophysiology, ethology, neuroanatomy, cognitive study, and other brain sciences. Clinical neurophysiology is an area of medicine that is concerned with testing the electrical function of the brain, spinal cord, and the nerves in the limbs and as well as in the muscles. This is done to help the diagnosis of a wide range of conditions affecting these parts of the body. Clinical neuro neurophysiology has close links with neurology, which deals with the diseases of the nervous system and also the muscles. Clinical neurophysiology is used for the study of the functions of the nervous system in the clinical setting, for diagnostic, intensive care, and intraoperative monitoring, known as also IOM. It, ut it utilizes techniques such as the electroencephalography, abbreviated as EEG, electromyography, known as EMG, somatosensory evoked potential, known as SSEP, motor of evoked potential, abbreviated as MEP, and also brainstem auditory evoked response, or known as BEER. So if we review back the definition and the meaning, the field of these sciences, we will know that the neuroscience, is, it is the scientific study of the nervous system. We will know that the neurophysiology is the study of the nervous system functions. We will know that clinical neurophysiology is an area of medicine that is concerned with testing the electrical functions of the brain, spinal cord, and the nerves in the limbs and as well as on the muscles. Electrophysiology. Electrophysiology is the measurement of electrical activity of neurons, or also known as nerve cells, and particular action potential activity. It is also refers to any test that measures nerve transmission rates. Many particular electrophysiological readings have specific names, but we will be concerned here only about electroencephalography, or usually referred as EEG, because this is the field of our uh, show. Now, since we understood what is the meaning of electri uh, electrophysiology, clinical neurophysiology, neurophysiology, and neuroscience, let us go and understand what is electroencephalography, EEG. Electroencephalography, EEG, is composed of three words, electro, encephalo, and graphy which are abbreviated usually with EEG. It is the recording of electrical activity along the scalp, along the head, produced by the firing of neurons within the brain. So what we are calculating, what we are measuring, what we are recording in EEG is the electrical activity being produced by the firing of neurons on the scalp, on the head. We don't have to activate it. We just have to put a sticky electrodes on the brain, scalp, and then connect these electrodes to an amplifier which picks up the signal, amplify it, and display it with a medical software which has an option to display it to the doctors. EEG is referred to the recording of the brain's spontaneous electrical activity over a short period of time. Usually, the EEG exam takes from 20 minutes to 45 minutes. I have seen labs who are doing the EEG in 20 minutes. I have seen some labs who are even extending it to a routine EEG up to one hour. But generally, the EEG is done 
from a period of 20 minutes to 45 minutes. In neurology, the main diagnostic application of EEG is in the case of epilepsy. And this is really 90% of the EEGs done in neurology, as I have seen, are done for the diagnostic of epilepsy, as epileptic activity can create clear abnormalities on a standard EEG study. So when we do a standard EEG study, if a patient comes and we have done EEG for him, in 90% of the cases, the neurologist or the neurophysiologist or electrophysiologist refers the patient to do the, N, to, to do the EEG so that there is a possibility to see the abnormality of electrical activities in his brain during the EEG. As well as there is a possibility if the patient even is having epilepsy or seizures, there is a possibility to see that his EEG is normal also. Neurons or nerve cells are electrically active cells that are primarily responsible for carrying out the brain's functions. Neurons create action potentials, which we have learned earlier, which are discrete electrical signals that travels down the axon and causes the release of chemical neurotransmitters at the synapse where it, wa it is received by the other cell or adjacent cell, which is an area of near contact between two neurons. So the synapse is the area of a contact between two neurons. The, neur uh, the neurotransmitter then activates a receptor in the dendrite or body of the neuron that is on the other side of the synapse, the postsynaptic neuron, which is, uh, we can say the postsynaptic neuron. The neurotransmitter, when combined with the receptor, typically causes an electrical current within the dendrite or body of the postsynaptic neuron. Thousands of postsynaptic currents from a single neuron, dendrite, and body then sum up to cause the neuron to generate an action potential. This neuron then synapses, this neuron then synapses on the other neurons and so on. Let us have a short idea about the history of EEG itself. As we learned just now that the EEG stands for electroencephalogram and it is also a test used to detect abnormalities related to, to electrical activity of the brain. But when it started, I think in, nine, in 1875, the presence of electrical current in the brain was discovered by an English physician called Richard Catton. Scientists then first captured and recorded brain waves in dogs, which was in 1912. But it was not until 1924 that Hans Berger, a German neurologist and psychiatrist, used his uh, ordinary radio equipment. The ordinary radio equipment he was keeping. Why he used it? He used it to amplify the brain's electrical activity so that he could record it on graph paper. Berger notes that rhythmic changes, rhythmic changes, what do we mean by rhythmic changes are the brain waves. The brain waves varied with the individual state of consciousness. If the patient is arousal, there is a specific brain wave. If the patient is non-arousal but alert, there is also a brain wave which is mostly alpha. If a patient is relaxing, there is a brain wave which is mostly theta. If the patient is sleeping, there is a brain wave which is mostly delta brain waves. Hans Berger gave the device its name and uh, sometimes he is credited with inventing the EEG device. In 1934, Fisher and Lombach first demonstrated epileptiform spikes. But in 1935, Gibbs, Davis, and Lennox described interactal spike waves and the three cycles pattern of clinical absence seizure, which began the field of electroencephalography. Subsequently, in 1936, Gibbs and Jasper reported the interactal spike as the focal signature of epilepsy. And now, the American EEG Society was founded in 1947, and the first International EEG Congress was held. And this is a picture of the German scientist, Hans Berger, who has invented the EEG. And this is a picture of modern EEG machine, which as you can see here, it consists of a trolley cart, PC, monitor, photo stimulator, amplifier. We will go to this in more details in our next episodes. So let us review back. What is the definition of EEG? EEG, sensitive test means we are not connecting the electrodes directly to the brain. No way. What we are doing exactly is just bringing a sticky electrodes, connecting it to one side to an amplifier. The other side will, the other side will be connected to the patient on his scalp. And it aids the neurologist in the diagnosis of epilepsy. Of course, 90% of neurologists refer patients to do EEG exams as they have su uh, suspicions of epilepsy seizure disorders 
and it involves placing some sticky electrodes in the scalp. So as I said, EEG involves placing some sticky electrodes in the scalp and recording the intrinsic brainwave activity while the patient is lying on a couch or a stretcher or even sitting on a bed. The test takes approximately, as I said, from 20 to 45 minutes to complete and is completely painless. Painless means we are not giving the patient a stimuli. We are just recording the generated, I mean, brain waves from the scalp. The various regions of the brain do not emit the same brain wave frequency simultaneously. An EEG electrode placed on the scalp would pick up many waves with different characteristics. So the EEG is the most important clinical tool in evaluating patients with suspected seizures, and it's the most influential tool in the diagnosis of seizures and epilepsy. It provides a record of ongoing electrical activity on the brain. And just to review with you back, these are the, this is the human brain, and these are the lobes of the brain. This is the frontal lobe. This is the parietal lobe, which sits behind the frontal lobe, and this is the occipital lobe at the back of the head. This is the temporal lobe, which runs at both sides of the left and right side. This is the cerebellum. This is our cerebellum. This is the brain stem, and this is the spinal cord. This is a sample of an EEG recording, and in my point of view, I'm not a doctor to be frank with you, but in my point of view, maybe it might be an absent seizure, a figure of an absent seizure. Anyhow, what I meant to show you here is that this is the way the EEG recording looks like. These are the labels of the montage, and these are the waves which we acquire. This bit, that if this uh, EEG, what is shown here, is for a normal patient or abnormal patient generally the EEG will look something like this without a regard if uh, there is abnormality on the EEG or not so let us review back what are the frequencies of brain waves as we have learned earlier in order of frequency in order of, of uh, frequency we will have the beta alpha theta and delta alpha we have known that it goes from 14 to 30 uh, sorry beta it goes from 14 to 30 alpha goes from 18 to 14 or 13.9 as i have mentioned here uh, theta goes from 47 or 4 to 8 we have the delta which goes from 1 to 3.9 or from 1 to 4 alpha can be noticed in relaxed reflective uh, beta can be relaxed and alert working theta can be uh, seen on drowsy mediative as well as delta can be seen on the sleepy or dreaming so this is the end of this show and we will have more details on EEG we will have more details on the clinical use of EEG limitations of EEG and much more in our next video so hopefully you will enjoy it and hopefully you will learn a lot from it. If you have any corrections, comments and feedbacks, I will be really very pleased and you may feel free to contact us at info at Researches. This is our email address. And you may kindly visit our web website, biomedresearches.com, as well as our, our epilepsy awareness program. Thank you, stay tuned and have a good day.